You stand I'm, uphill. I'm standing, I'm standing uphill. uphill. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, hi everyone. I'm Roger Marsh. I'm a U.S. Senator from Kansas. Uh, my fourth trip to the border. Very proud to be joined here with uh, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. Will be here in a second, as you can imagine. Ted's talking to some fellow Texans down there. Senator Ted Budd from North Carolina. John Hoven from North Dakota, and uh, uh, the the Border Patrol Council President Brandon Judd. Brandon, thanks for being here. Thanks. Um, I've done mission work all over the world, and the, the, I'm just telling you, it's uh, very emotional to come here to see what's going on. Uh, just the humanitarian crisis here, the number of people, and I just want to commend the Border Patrol, our National Guardsmen, all the volunteers, the NGOs, that they are doing everything possible to treat folks humanely. But, but I'm telling you, we have to change policy. We can't keep doing what we've been doing. Our systems are overwhelmed. Um, it's truly a humanitarian crisis. Uh, this, this particular area, it sounds like they've treated, uh, they've seen over, I'm a doctor, so I feel like I'm treating, I wanna go treat all these people. They say 10% of them show up with some type of an illness or, or an injury, but they do an intake of over a thousand people a day here. They're doing an incredible job. I don't know, don't know what this is going to look like tomorrow. Uh, overall, they told us that they had 10,000 in, encounters yesterday, 3,000 gotaways. That's the size of my hometown. Uh, we should commend the community of Brownsville for doing so many things to help treat these folks uh, accordingly. Um, I think mostly my what I just share with you today, it's very uh, emotionally draining uh, what we're seeing here. Um, but the, the, but the nation needs to see this. This is why President Biden's to come and look one of these camps in the eyes and see for himself the tragedy that's on, ongoing here. So thank you for joining us. Um, uh, Senator Cruz is here. We are witnessing an absolute travesty unfolding on our southern border. On Monday, we apprehended over 10,000 people on the border, the highest level in history. On Tuesday, we apprehended over 10,000 people on the border, again, the highest level in history. There are right now, where we're standing, more than 22,000 people camped just south of the border, getting ready to come across. Just in this location, in less than a month, we've had over 35,000 Venezuelans cross illegally just right here, not counting the whole rest of the border. Every day, just right here, they're encountering, encountering 90 to 100 Chinese nationals. Now, for anyone that doesn't have their globe nearby, China is not immediately to the south of the United States. But 90 to 100 a day are crossing illegally on this border, being smuggled in by Mexican drug cartels. And, and I have to say, I am angry because this is deliberate. This is a decision that was made by President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and congressional Democrats to open up the border to what is nothing less than an invasion. Ask yourself, why is President Biden not here? Why is Kamala Harris not here? Why is Elizabeth Warren not here? Why is AOC, she still owns the white pantsuit, why is she not here with her head buried in her hands? Because they don't give a damn about the dead bodies. Six weeks ago, I asked Secretary Mayorkas how many migrants died in the past year crossing illegally. He said, I don't know. The number is 853. But he can't be bothered to worry about that. I asked him how many women have been sexually assaulted in the last year by human traffickers. He said, I don't know because the administration can't be bothered by that. I asked how many children have been physically and sexually assaulted. Again, I don't know. We're witnessing modern day slavery. And maddeningly, what the Biden administration has decided is they want more. Title 42 is expiring today, and you know what happens tomorrow? Those numbers go up. This is an invasion, and they want the numbers to go up. Let me say to the men and women from the, from the Border Patrol who are heroes, they are extraordinary heroes, and we're down here to tell them thank you, to tell them we love you, to tell them we got your back. 
even as your political superiors are making it impossible for you to do your job. The Biden administration is really proud now that they have apps on their phone, that when someone crosses illegally, they can fill out an application in two minutes. This is the Amazon version of illegal immigration. They're going to make it fast and deliver them anywhere in the country. We've seen six and a half million people cross illegally since Joe Biden became president, and the administration wants six and a half million to be 10 million, to be 12 million, to be 15 million, to be 20 million. And the body bags that pile up, they can't be bothered to worry about. I'll tell you, the great state of Texas is on the front lines. The volume is overwhelming. It's got to stop. John Hoven, North Dakota. Over the last two years, I would say, I've been to McAllen, I've been to Del Rio, I've been to Eagle Pass, um, I've been to El Paso, I've been on uh, the other side of the border to Mexico, Guatemala, Colombia, Ecuador, here. And what I see each time I go, is more people coming illegally. What's happening is our ability to process them is just getting faster. We're processing, processing more and more, but it's just more and more people coming illegally. And they're being released into the country with a notice to appear in OPER for, I guess, a hearing in maybe five years. And that's a preliminary hearing. So essentially they're being admitted into the country. And we're just processing them faster and faster and faster. And when I first went uh, to Del Rio, I think they said, oh, there's uh, something like people coming from illegally from 50 different countries. And then by the time I got to El Paso, it was from 100 different countries. And it's not just people coming illegally. The drugs, look at all the drugs, the fentanyl, the drugs affecting every state in the nation every state in the nation. How about human trafficking? So it's not just people coming here illegally, it's drugs, it's human trafficking. And we just process them faster and faster and more and more. When I was in, in uh, Central and South America, the message is come, come. You might have to wait for a little bit, but eventually you'll get in. We just learned that we can only return 500 a day to Mexico, so you return 500 a day, a thousand come across the next day. You return 500, 2,000 come the next day. Well, you can figure that out. They just all eventually come in. And they all have a cell phone now. So what's the first thing they do? They call back to the to people in their country and people waiting on their side and said, yes, I'm in here now, so you come on up. And the cartels are getting rich. Think of the misery that they're exacting on all these people. And they're getting rich doing it. And this could change. This could change immediately. When you listen to Secretary Mayorkas, he gives you this long spiel about how the border's secure. Well, obviously it's not secure. Last year, two and a half million came across, and we're at a rate to exceed that. And of course, when Title 42 goes off, it will increase even more. But the reality is, with a change in policy, the CBP professionals, the Border Patrol professionals could stop this. They could stop this. If we truly enforced remain in Mexico and third safe country and we enforced it as we did under the prior administration, we could stop this. Every American needs to say to the Biden administration, you were elected to enforce the law. Enforce the law. Enforce the law. That message needs to be heard across this country. And with those changes in policy, remain in Mexico, third safe country, we could stop this because people in the other, coming from all these different countries would understand, no, if they want an asylum claim, they have to apply from outside the country. They have to follow the law. I'm Senator Ted Budd from North Carolina. We know that if we want a strong country, then we have to have strong borders. And I've been to multiple sections of this border over multiple years. I've seen these crises, and this is truly a humanitarian crisis. Uh, we just witnessed folks uh, being transported all around the country. I, I visited with Customs and Border Patrol agents, law enforcement. Uh, we have paramedics here, people from the city of Brownsville. I just want to say thank you to all of them that are trying to do the right thing, uh, that are trying to save lives down here. But I want to address Joe Biden, and I lay this problem at his feet. 
This used to be a bipartisan issue, but in the last several years, he's politicized it. Uh, he, he's let, let this issue lay dormant. Uh, it's gotten worse and worse. He's had two and a half years to prepare for this issue. And on January 20th of 2021, the yellow diesel equipment, the concrete, the steel that was being set up to uh, give our law enforcement a chance to defend our borders, to protect our borders, all that lay still. And it's laying there now. What we need to do is pass the bill. The first thing I did when I got to the Senate just a few months ago was to file a bill. It's Build the Wall Now Act. And that takes money that's already been appropriated. It allows us to build the wall that gives law enforcement a chance. Look, I just want to say thank you to all those that are trying to do the right thing here. And I want to ask Joe Biden, I want to ask the administration, come to the table. Us as Republican senators, uh, those on the U.S. House side, we have solutions that'll save lives, that'll defend our country. Let's remember that if we want a strong country, we have to have strong borders, and Joe Biden's not doing that. And somebody else I want to thank and I want to introduce is, is Brandon Judd. He's a, a great American, a great law enforcement agent. He's with the National Council of Border Patrol, and I want to pass it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. What you're witnessing is not safe or humane. It is not orderly. What we are seeing today is nothing more than chaos. What we want is we want an honest conversation. We want to be able to discuss and have the American public understand what is truly going on on our borders. It's not safe, it's not humane, it is not orderly. It's one thing to talk about numbers, but unless we have the context of what those numbers actually mean, they're just numbers. 10,000 apprehensions means that we have a station that we just had 44 agents show up for muster. Only four deployed to the field to patrol the border. Four. 40 of those agents are doing administrative work. That means the cartel owns that area. The cartel can get any, the cartels can get anything that they want through that area. Cartels understand the business of illegal immigration. They look to create opportunities. They understand that all they have to do is flood one area, pull resources out of the field. Now they can bring their fentanyl into the United States. It shouldn't be a surprise that we have 70,000 Americans that are dying every year of fentanyl poisoning, and that could end. But it can't end if we're dealing with what we're dealing now, and it is not humane. Numbers and apprehensions, it's important to discuss them, but we have to understand the context. The only thing that we want to do, the only thing that law enforcement wants to do is protect the American people. We put that uniform on, hoping to be able to do our jobs, hoping to be able to protect our fellow Americans, and we can't, and we're demoralized. Border Patrol agents right now are fed up with President Joe Biden. They're tired of the rhetoric. They're tired of Secretary Mayorkas getting up there and saying, give us time, we have a plan. That's not a plan. They knew this was coming. I spoke with the transition team when Joe Biden was announced the president of the United States, when he won the election. I spoke with the transition team. I told them what was going to happen. They knew what was going to happen. They did nothing. I spoke with Secretary Marcus prior to his confirmation hearing. I told him what needed to happen. I even stayed within the parameters of Joe Biden. I did not ask them to stick with the Trump policies. I told them what they could do that were within Biden's parameters. They refused, and that's the chaos that we now have. That's an honest conversation. And until we have the honest conversation, until we talk about the context of the apprehensions, what does that mean? Every single time we apprehend 10,000 people, that means we're only deploying 20% of our resources to the field in certain areas. It could be as low as 10% and in some areas, 5%. That's a problem. But border wide, 10% when we have 10,000 apprehensions, that means the cartels own our borders. That's an issue for the American people. It can be fixed. It needs to be fixed. We know how to fix it. There just isn't the political will to do it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks. I just want to make a, a closing comment here, if I could. Um, you know, as a physician, I took an oath to heal the sick. 
and I certainly want us to do our part. But then as an officer in the military, as a now as a senator, I've taken an oath to defend this country and to make sure she's safe. Right now, the number one most immediate threat to our national security is this open border. And that's why I've called on the House to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. He's derelict in his duties. I'm calling on Joe Biden to come see this problem for, for himself. We can solve this problem. And I want to bring uh, Brandon back up here one second. Brandon, if you could tell Joe Biden there's one thing that we need to do. Do you need more troops? Do you need more, more t technology? What do you need to do for us to secure this border? The American public should not shoulder this burden. We do not need more resources. We don't need no more, more technology. We don't need more infrastructure. We have to have policy. We have to go back to the rule of law. Yes. If we have policy, we can secure the border tomorrow. He won't give it to us. That's exactly right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have time for questions? Thank you. Thank you. We'll do questions. Let's do some questions. Okay. We'll do a couple. Yeah, we'll do a few questions. Okay. Yeah, all right. We'll do some questions. Okay, go, go, go ahead. Senator Marshall, you just witnessed uh, you got a case of the humanitarian crisis here at the border. What is your state, in particular your district area, what will you do after this to help aid border towns like this one? Yeah, you know, I, I think that Kansas has always shouldered their, their fair share of the responsibility. Going back to the Vietnam War, we've invited thousands of people in, into Kansas. A lot of the NGOs here are connected to people back in Kansas as well. But I'm telling you, we're all overwhelmed right now. It is, this is unsustainable. Senator Marshall, yeah, how many people Senator. did you see back there when, when, when you were touring? John, you want to take it? Uh, well, I, I think yesterday they had something like 3,300 come across. Uh, and. Uh, that's before, uh, you know, the change in policy. Title 42, uh, of course, expires tonight. Uh, so we're understanding that that could easily double uh, after uh, Title 42 expires. And so that's the point we're making. You've got to change policy. They're already overwhelmed. You've already got a border crisis. So we've got to see a change in policy. And that was the question put to, to uh, Brandon Judd. The, the CBP and, and Border Patrol, they could get control of this right now, but they've got to have the tool to do it. You need the change in policies that I talked about, the remain in Mexico, the third safe country. You've got to make sure that people who want to apply for asylum do it from their country or the first safe country they come to, and then we will have control of the border. That's what needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. Well, and and, and, and let, 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 me, let me supplement the answer. Let me, let me supplement the answer to that. Let me supplement the answer to that, which is we saw back there a couple of hundred people that were sitting there being processed. But they've right now, the Biden administration has sped up their processing so that they can process an illegal immigrant in about two minutes. They are sending 40 or more buses a day, full buses, full of illegal immigrants to detention facilities. So as fast as they scan them in, they pull out a phone, they scan their documents, they take whatever they say, name, age, what country you're from, and boom, they put them on a bus and send them to facilities. To give you a sense, the facilities here can hold roughly 4,600 people. Yesterday they had 7,000. So you know what they did? They had to release hundreds of people, just release them into the communities. And you know, a minute ago you asked about what other states are doing for South Texas. I appreciate that. Because, look, South Texas is bearing the brunt of this. What the Biden administration is doing to South Texas is wrong. The hospitals here are full. The prisons here are full. The schools here are full. The farmers and ranchers see the dead bodies every day from this travesty. And all Joe Biden wants to do is have more people come illegally. What are you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what, have, what, have, what have specifically the Republican members that are here today, what have you all done to help Joe Biden in this Okay. okay. All right. So that's a ridiculous and silly question. I want to commend you for being the media and telling a Democrat policy. So let me ask you something. Come on, man. That's been going on for 20 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, let, 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 me, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. What rate of illegal immigration did we have in 2020? But you have Do you know anything? I asked you a question. How long have you been in office? Do you know anything? How long have you been in office? I've been in office 11 years yeah, now. And this is okay. the count during multiple administrations. Except your role. Okay. You don't get to argue with me. You asked your question. You, you asked your question. You don't get. You want to hold a press conference? You can do it over there. You have multiple cameras. You want to hold a press conference? You can do it over there. How are you? Right, so, so hold on. I'm going to answer his question. The talking point of the Democrats, which this media reporter happily parrots, 
is, gosh, the problem can't be fixed. There's one little problem with that. It is an utter and complete lie. In 2020, the last year of the Trump presidency, we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. You ask, what have I done? I've championed the men and women of Border Patrol. I've championed securing the border. I've championed Remain in Mexico. And we turned this problem around and solved it. And we went from Joe Biden inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. And the first day in office, he made political decisions to cause this problem. And you should be ashamed of yourself because you're a reporter and you're not reporting facts. You're telling lies. Joe Biden made a political decision and they turn a blind eye. If you want to know just how much they turn a blind eye, six weeks ago in the Judiciary Committee, I questioned Alejandro Mayorkas. I put up a poster board of colored wristbands. And I asked him, Mr. Secretary, what are these colored wristbands? And he said, I don't know, I have no idea. That was the one bit of his testimony that truly shocked me because just about every illegal immigrant who crosses the border is wearing a colored wristband. They correspond to how many thousands of dollars the immigrants owe the cartels. And the fact that Mayorkas doesn't even know what they are, if you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, as I have done many times, you see hundreds or thousands of these wristbands laying in the ground. Sir, I don't know if you stood there, but I know Mayorkas hasn't because he didn't know what the wristbands were. And that means he hasn't talked to the Border Patrol agents either. It is immoral. And when those kids cross, the teenage boys who owe thousands of dollars to the cartels, the Biden administration flies them to every city in America. They fly them to Kansas. And there those teenage boys are forced to work for the Mexican drug cartels committing crimes to pay off the money they owe. And if they don't pay it off, they'll murder their families. And I'll tell you, as bad as the boys have it, the girls have it worse. There are thousands upon thousands of teenage girls trapped in sex slavery. And yet, for those of you in the media who don't report on that, you should be ashamed. This is evil. And the reason you don't see any Democrats here is they can't defend this. They're counting on the press not to cover it. It's wrong. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Cruz, the El Paso shooter called Thank in an invasion. Is there available?